I'm Bambi Francisco with Vader News, and I'm speaking with Charlene Lee. She's the founder of Altimeter Group, which is a digital strategy consulting firm based in San Mateo. Charlene, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me here. Charlene, you are an expert about anything social media, so I want to talk to you about how society is being shaped by the ability for um, anyone to contribute to this sort of global dialogue. Well, it's, it's something that's been slowly evolving, starting with just the simple World Wide Web that was so easy to use. Mm -hmm. It's actually 20 years old this year. Yeah, um, I mean, that's it's amazing. amazing to see that. And so that evolution has been where it was initially just being able to get information at your fingertips and then being able to buy anything that you wanted and to some degree selling things on eBay. The sense of power now that you have as an individual has been slowly increasing. Mm -hmm. So now I have the ability to, to go out and say anything I want, but with the ability of being able to fill out a form. Mm -hmm, so I like mm -hmm. to say, if you can shop, you can, you can share. Right, and this right, whole right. act of sharing, I think it's, it's the generosity of sharing that mm -hmm. people take the time to share their thoughts on a blog, on a Twitter, a review of a product or anything, mm -hmm. that I think is really bringing people together closer. So if you think about the thing that really makes us human, it's the ability to connect with each other, to communicate, right, and to right. draw relationships with each other. Right. And now with these social technologies, the ability to create relationships anywhere, at right. any time, across cultures and languages even. Around it's really micro, you know, about anything you want, yeah. anything you want. Is, is really powerful, I think. Now, you just talked about making friends, but you also talked about defriending. So there is this, I think, there's a bit of a backlash here between everybody, the, this idea of having friends, I mean, this sort of lost its meaning, this idea of having followers on Twitter, sort of how many followers do you really need? So um, it really this idea of friends needs to almost change. It does, and, and I think the biggest problem is that everyone is the same level of friends. Mm -hmm. So I have over 2,000 people who are friends with me on Facebook. Clearly, they are not my friends. And so I have this friend management problem on yeah. Facebook <laughs> where there are people who are truly friends of mine. Mm -hmm. And, and they're, they're like people I talk to all the time. So I want to stay very connected to them. I want to see their news feed. And there are friends from college who it's great to connect with them. But hey, you know, I'm not invested in your life anymore. And then there are the pro professional people who just meet me at a conference and friend me. Right, right. So I end up accepting everybody because I don't have time to manage this. And right. then I manage it in terms of the news feeds now with my groups in there. And, and the same thing with followers. I think my strategy on, on Twitter is to get as many followers as possible, but I'm not sitting there constantly counting right, and aggressively right. doing it, whereas some other people are like all about their, their following count. It comes down to your personal strategy when it comes to media mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and your friend's strategy. Everyone's going to have a different strategy, so mm -hmm. you need to think a little bit about it before going out there. And I think people are, are defriending now because they realize I have the wrong strategy for mm -hmm. what I want to do. I really want to make it a more close-knit group on Facebook, but I have 200 friends. I want to grow, grow, you know, cut it down to 40 friends. Well, do you think it's sort of cutting it down, or do you think it's moving towards specialty sites? For instance, we were watching Famplosion in one of our um, Vaderbox segments, and that is really for, you talked about lots of moms on Facebook, and maybe or parents on Facebook creating these groups, and maybe it's about going on specialty sites where friends or those connections have more meaning. And, and I agree, it could be going on to specialty sites, but then if my network is on a place like Facebook or MySpace, it's really hard to get them to come over here, too. Right, right, so right. My, my girlfriends from school, my kids' school, yeah. have no idea what I'm talking about on Facebook, because I talk primarily about work stuff. Right. So I would love to be able to just broadcast personal things right. to just a certain group of people on Facebook. Right. Can't do that now. So yeah. friend management, not only in terms of who they are, but what they see. So Facebook needs to, to sort of focus on fringe management. Talk a little bit about the difference between the way teenagers interact with social media and adults. It's a way of life for them. Mm -hmm. It's a destination for adults. For, for teenagers, millennials, um, people are pretty much uh, under, under the age of 25, 27 or so. It is something well, that they are always about connected. On the cusp of that. Yeah, it's what we wish. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they are constantly connected. And it, don't even try to just cut off the Facebook page because it's on their phone. Mm -hmm. It's on MySpace and Facebook. It's on their phone. You can't cut that off. Mm -hmm. And they're texting. It's just a mix of everything that they do. Mm -hmm. Facebook is just one of the places. I mean, email really isn't. Mm -hmm. It's a way for them to stay connected with the people who aren't on these social networks. Okay. Whereas for adults, our way of connecting is primarily through websites and through email, a little bit through IM. And Facebook is sort of the adjunct thing that's added in. So it's almost like an 80-20 thing in social networks and our networks for young people is the bulk of their activities. 20% is everything else. 
for adults, I think more mature adults, it's just the other way around. The, the social networks, if they're on them, tend to be a small part of their overall experience. I'll tell you a little bit about uh, Facebook Connect and OpenID. It seems that they both really want to make it really easier. We're thinking about integrating Facebook Connect here at Vader. It seems like they're both trying to make it really easy for people to move from one network to another. Right, and, and it's about taking all the friends and the content from Facebook or MySpace or any of these sites, taking them out of those places onto, for example, Vader TV, which is a great idea. So why recreate the wheel, basically? Right. Right. Uh, the, the Facebook Connect is very well developed. It's completely integrated because they own the entire thing from beginning to end, and it's easy. You mm -hmm. basically take some code, put it onto your site, press a button, and you're connected. Open Social, Open ID, they're all part of the Open Stack is what it's called right now. And it's, I think, six or seven different protocols and standards that mm -hmm. are sort of cobbled together. Yeah. They're on 0 0.8 right now, which oh. kind of gives you an idea. Yeah. So it's still early on, but it's a very powerful thing for one simple reason. It's everybody else outside of Facebook. Right. Now, Facebook is trying to work with Open ID. I think in the end, about three, four years from now, mm -hmm. the standards will be completely developed and they will start having all the ties to each other. So I would say go with Facebook Connect right now. It's a great, easy way to connect it. Give people the option to use Open ID. Also, when that's ready to, for prime time, you can do that right now. Good. It's a bit of a clue. One last question. How will social media evolve in, say, you could do two years, five years, take your pick. Well, it's, it's related to this whole idea of Facebook Connect and Open Social, that social networks would be like air, that they will be anywhere you want them to be and, and, and time you need them. Mm -hmm. So think about the shopping experience right now. It's a pretty lonely experience. You have ratings and reviews from people, but mm -hmm. you have no idea who these people are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be better if you could see the review of somebody who you actually know something about and mm -hmm. provides you context for, okay, here's a great book, I want to read it. What does my friend think about it? Mm -hmm. And that right now is, is dispersed across the Internet in, in these little silos of Internet sites, really? yeah. social networking sites. And I think we'll look back five years from now and say, it was kind of odd that we had to go to Facebook to be social. <laughs> you know, I should be social anywhere I want to be. That is, we almost have to end it there. Go to, you don't have to go to Facebook any longer, at least in a few years, to be social. You heard it from Charlene. <laughs> Thanks, Charlene. I've been speaking with Charlene. She is the founder of Altimeter Group. I'm Bambi Francisco.